It is 5.30 a.m. on Monday, February 11th. Um, I don't have a whole lot to share with you because I talked so much in that last video about and stuff. <laughs> this regularly scheduled update for more in-depth information. So I actually, this is Tuesday, February 12th. I actually filmed this yesterday morning at 5.30 before we were scheduled to leave to go to my doctor's appointment to see my endocrinologist. And unfortunately, I couldn't get it posted. Like my computer was going super duper slow. I tried using the YouTube app. None of like my descriptions or my tags or anything were there. So I was like, I'll just do it when I get home. And unfortunately, yesterday was the biggest CF of a day. If you don't know what CF is, it's a cluster, <laughs> cluster fuck. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a bad day. So for those of you who are new, hello, my name is Misty, welcome. <laughs> um, I started keto on March 6, 2017 at 425 pounds and an insulin dependent type two diabetic. Um, and then I've developed myasthenia gravis and been diagnosed with a couple of spinal disorders that are no bueno. But yesterday was, I drive three and a half hours to see my endocrinologist because I am Native American and if I go see a doctor within my tribe I get all of my testing supplies and my medications for free so I don't have to rely you know I don't have to use my own insurance and I don't have to um, pay out of pocket they bill my insurance but I don't have to pay a deductible or a copay so that's why I make the drive so yesterday was that day um, I go every three to six months, depending on how my um, blood sugars are behaving. And if those of you who have been following me for the last year know they haven't been. So I, I've been off insulin though for, I think September, August or September 2017 was the last time I had any insulin, like daily injection. But I also started mycophenolate, which is an immune suppression therapy for the myasthenia. And since then, my blood sugars have been elevated no matter what I've done, no matter what medication I've taken other than Forsiga, but that put me in the hospital with DKA and I was literally dying. It just, like nothing I have taken has helped with this. So yesterday I went and... In December, my A1C was like 8.2, and yesterday it was 10 point something. So, and my fasting blood sugar yesterday was like 311. So, needless to say, my body is rebelling and rejecting something. Something is not going right in my body. Um, as far as the weigh-in, I had two weigh-ins last week, so it's kind of confusing, <laughs> but... The last time you saw me on Wednesday, I weighed in at 366, and today I'm weighing in at 365. So it's only a one pound loss from Wednesday, but it's actually a total loss of four pounds last week. So since January 7th, when I kind of restarted this whole weight loss thing for the new year, I'm down 14 pounds, which isn't bad at all for six weeks. So, <clears throat> but, so, so yeah, so the weight is coming down, but <laughs> the blood sugars, I, I'm back on insulin. Well, it's, it, <laughs> that's the, that's T, too long didn't read, TLDR. I'm back on insulin and I'm mad about it. And I'm sad about it. And it's like, for those of you who have been following me from the beginning, you know how hard it was for me to lose weight while I was taking insulin. I mean, I was dropping inches and like my face was shrinking. Like you could see that I was losing inches, but the scale just wasn't moving. I mean, it took me forever to lose 25 pounds. And I don't, it's like, I don't want that again. I want to get this weight off so I can have my back surgery. And the endocrinologist, he's like, but you can't let your blood sugars be this high. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> it's like... I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. So he was like, have we ever tested your insulin levels? And I said, no. And I said, I asked my, you know, my regular doctor to do it. And he said, he didn't think there was a use for it. 
And my endocrinologist was like, <coughs> sorry guys, I have a little bit of a chest congestion. So, and head congestion, so allergies are insane. So if I sound a little wheezy or if I sound a little out of breath, it's because I'm a little wheezy and I'm a little out of breath. Um, anyway, he said that he wanted to check my insulin levels. There's like three or four tests that he's gonna take um, to see if, He's testing to see if I'm if I'm still insulin resistant, which means my pancreas is producing too much insulin, or if my pancreas is no longer producing insulin. And he said if it's the latter, he said that would make sense as to why I'm struggling so much with you know eating basically a carnivore diet, very very low carbs, and I'm still having an issue with elevated blood glucose levels so I won't know for sure he said hopefully by the end of the week maybe Monday um, if it's insulin resistant I just have to keep going you know and I just have to keep going and keep trying to get the weight off you know and keep doing keto or carnivore what you know the carnivore version of keto is actually kind of what I'm doing you know and just working as hard as I can on making sure that I'm keeping my um, my, you know, my carbs as low as possible. If it's not insulin resistance, if it's, if it's the fact that my pancreas just isn't producing enough insulin or producing insulin anymore, that means I'm going to be on insulin from now on. And honestly, <laughs> the way my past couple of years have gone, I'm just going to assume that my pancreas has shit the bed. <laughs> Um, and I'm not laughing because, oh, this is so funny. I'm laughing because my life has been a literal fuck, fuck all for three years. And it's like, what's just, what, just one more thing. Let's just add one more thing to the stupid fucking list of all the elements I have because my body has decided that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. Yeah. At least I'm not crying. That's that's a win, I think. I think it's because I'm just so angry. <laughs> it's like, that's what Tony was like, I, you know, when I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing, I either end up in the hospital almost dying because of the stupid farsiga, or there's nothing happening. <laughs> like, there's nothing happening with my body. It's not doing what it's supposed to do. And, you know, a part of me... A, you know, the bigger part of me wants it to be insulin resistant so I don't have to go on insulin for the rest of my life. But the other part of me is like, you know, let it be that my pancreas isn't producing enough insulin because it, then I know that it's not me, that I'm not doing something wrong. You know, it's just my body. And even if it's insulin resistant, it's, it's still really not my fault. It's just my body. You know, it's my body and I'm trying to, to do what I can do to get the micro, you know, the myasthenia and the diabetes to play together nicely. And unfortunately, the while I'm on immune suppression therapy, he said it's just going to have to be insulin for now. And, you know, he he's the same boat as my regular doctor, you know, and losing weight may help the diabetes go away. But if it's the latter with the with the pancreas not producing enough insulin, I could lose, you know, 300 pounds. Of course, I'd be 65 pounds then. But <laughs> I could lose a significant amount of weight and still be diabetic. So it's just, I don't know. I'm just, every time I think I'm going to get a win, I get a win. And then, like, the weight loss is a win for me. And then... My friend's like, he's like, God dang, you get enough, you get a lot of curveballs. He's like, you're probably used to it by now. And I was like, I don't know that you're ever used to it, but it's just par for the course. You know, it's like, just hit me with something else. Why don't you? <laughs> so, uh, so yesterday in that video, before I went to the doctor, I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be down any pounds this week because... We had that trip yesterday, which should have been seven hours, which ended up being 13 hours. Um, we left here at six because it was raining and it was um, 
really foggy and it's a three and a half hour drive that ended up being four, a four hour drive. We get there, they're like, oh honey, your appointment, you canceled your appointment. And I said, the hell I did. <laughs> it's like, I just confirmed my appointment with you guys on Thursday. Your automatic system called, I confirmed. So they had me down for labs, but didn't have me down to see the doctor. And then, so he was at a funeral, so we didn't get to see, I didn't even see him until one and we got there like at 9.30. So um, I go to Tallahena which is this little bitty mountain lake town in nowhere, Oklahoma. <laughs> There's nothing there. So we spent, you know, three, three or whatever hours trying to just entertain ourselves. Luckily, I have the Kindle app on my phone, so I can just read a book or whatever. And Rob, he doesn't like to do that, and he didn't have his earbud. Anyway, and we had no internet connection, so oh, it was a mess. So saw him at one, and then... Um, it took 45 minutes at the pharmacy, and so we didn't leave there until like 2.30, like 2.45, almost 3. So we didn't get back to Dallas until 6, and um, we didn't get home until 7. So it was a really long day, and thank God Rob was driving me, or I would have never even made it out of Dallas. So, yeah, it was just it was just a long day. It was just frustrating and aggravating, and just, my cholesterol is perfect, though. I wish I had him print off the paperwork. I was just, I was so angry <laughs> about the whole insulin thing. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he's like, your cholesterol is perfect. He's like, it's beautiful. I love it. So let me grab the insulin that I'm taking. Let me see if I can find it. Ugh. So, so I get up. Let's see, can you get situated? <laughs> So, <clears throat> so before I show you the insulins that I am taking, um, one thing that he and I talked about is fasting because I get a lot of comments about Dr. Fong and do, have I read Dr. Fong and do I fast and why don't I fast and blah, 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 blah. Unfortunately, <clears throat> intermittent fasting or fasting at all isn't great for all diabetics. And for me, um, my problem is when my body goes into a fasted state, my liver dumps glucose like crazy. Um, that is why I can have a nighttime reading of like 95 and wake up the next morning and my fasting blood sugar is 250. It's because once my body hits that fasted state after six hours of sleeping, my liver just is just dumping, dumping, dumping. And that's why intermittent fasting and fasting in general doesn't work for me because my body just, and it's been like that for, I've been diabetic for almost 13 years and it's been that way for 11, 11 years. Um, it's the main reason why um, my first doctor and I put me on Novolin N. So that's one of the first insulins I'm taking. Um, it's a vial, so I have to draw it with a syringe. No big deal. It's pretty easy. Um, I, so Novolin N is a medium-acting insulin. So you've probably heard of Lantus or Levomir. Um, a lot of people start. That's probably the most common um, insulin people go on first that's a longer acting insulin so like you'll take it at let's say you take it at six o'clock in the morning and you'll finally start seeing results you know 12 13 14 hours later for novolin n this is a medium acting so you'll start seeing results he said it starts peaking between four and six hours so um, i'm to take this at bedtime so right before i go to bed and he said that way when my body gets ready to go into that fasted state, I already have insulin in my system to combat my liver dumping a bunch of glucose. So that's why I'm taking that. And then I'm also taking Nova Log, which is a pen. Um, this is a rapid acting insulin. So this is the one that I take with my meals. And 
<clears throat> I'm on a sliding scale. I've, I don't use the sliding scale. I don't. Um, I tend to take between 10 and 20 units, um, and then I just make sure I keep a pretty close eye on what I've done. So, um, yeah. So I'm on two different kinds of insulin, a, a medium acting for bedtime, and then a rapid acting for meals. Our goal, my goal in this, is to get to a point where I have the perfect dosage of this that takes away the need for this because I'm eating very low carb during the day. Because he's like, well, I can, you know, subscribe, you know, prescribe you a carb absorbing medicine. And I'm like, I don't need that. <laughs> I was like, for the most part, the only carbs I eat during the week are strawberries and maybe a little, you know, whipped cream with them. Or every once in a while, we'll go to salt grass and I'll have a salad or lettuce on an Indian hyper wrap. It's like, I'm not eating, you know, any other carbs. I'm just eating protein. So... And it's not gluconeogenesis, guys. It's not. I know people like to throw that word around and caution you. You can't have too many protein. You know, you can't eat a whole lot of protein. Your body will only go into gluconeogenesis if your body needs to go into gluconeogenesis. So um, Keto Connect did actually did a really good video about it. And I know, I want to say the diet doctor did or um, Intensity Health. Someone else did a really good video about it. So... I know people like to throw those buzzwords around, especially in the keto community and people who think they're keto gurus, but your body won't go into gluconeogenesis unless it needs to go into gluconeogenesis, okay? Okay, so I do get a lot of questions about what meal plan I'm following. If I'm following macros, I'm basically doing a carnivore version of keto. So there are probably 50 versions of keto. Keto just means high carb, high, I mean, whoo, no, high fat, low carb diet. So as, the whole point is to get your body to burn ketones rather than burning carbohydrates for fuel. So if you're like me and you're eating, you know, fatty cuts of meat like ribeye, um, or you're adding like fats to your lean proteins, like for chicken, like today we're gonna have our pesto, um, my pesto cream sauce chicken. I'm gonna add heavy cream and cheese to that chicken to add a fat. Or when we have bacon, or when I have, you know, 80, 20 ground beef, all of my cuts of meat are, you know, have a higher fat to protein ratio, pepperoni, those kinds of things. So, you know, it's not, you know, 80, you know, 80, 15, 5 or 70, 20, 10, you know, your macros are so completely personal. Um, so please don't get caught up in, in all of that, especially if you're new or if you've been doing this for a couple of years, there's a million different ways to do keto. It's not, a pro, it's not like Weight Watchers where it's like, here you count these points and this is how you do this. No, it's you find out what works for you because you may start with some macros and you're doing it and either you're not losing weight or those kinds of things. So you have to play around with it. There's no, it, your body is just, it's like my body. It's like my body, has said, I can't, my pancreas is like, my pancreas and my liver are like, we can't do this, Misty. <laughs> if you're suppressing your immune system, because we're confused. We think that you have an infection. We think that you're sick and we're pumping all this stuff into your blood system to help you feel better, but it's not, it's making things worse. So, you know, you have, and I've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple of weeks about, I'm not losing weight. What am I doing wrong? You may not be doing anything wrong. I mean, sometimes you lose really quick. Like your first 10% of your body loss or your, rewind, start all over. The first about 10 to 20% of your loss on the scale is water weight. So once you've gotten that fluid off, it may take a little bit longer for you to start burning pounds, but you can't compare yourself with somebody else. You can't, I mean, because, I mean, you just can't. But comparison is the thief of joy. You cannot celebrate your little successes. Successes. Get off the scale. If I didn't film weekly weigh-in videos for you guys, like if I wasn't sharing my journey with you guys, I wouldn't weigh. And there was a time last year, 2017, where I didn't weigh. I was like, I'm not getting on that scale. I'm not doing it. But for now, I'm trying to keep track of the, how the fentramine and I are getting along. So, you know, measure your body. I still haven't had a chance to do that. But one of these days I will, you know, note how your clothes are fitting. 
Um, if you are sticking to a low carbohydrate diet, if you're sticking to 30, 30 or less carbs a day, your body will naturally go into ketosis. It just naturally will. That's how your body works. So if you're finding that you're not losing the weight or you know, you're up a couple of pounds, take a look at what you're eating. Are you having any kind of like sugar-free candy? Um, like lilies, those kinds of things that are th um, sweetened with through erythritol are, are actually better than those sweetened with maltitol because your body has the same insulin response to maltitol as it does table sugar. And in fact, it's an actually higher insulin response. So that means your insulin is spiking, like your blood glucose is spiking. And so it's going to cause you, um, your body's going to react to it just like you had a Snickers you know, a Snickers or a Baby Ruth or something. So try to stay away from maltitol. Um, you know, check your nut. A lot of people are cooking with almond flour, coconut flour. Those things still have carbs and especially almond flour. That can add up really quickly. Same thing with like heavy cream. Heavy cream has carbs in it. So just kind of be mindful of what you're eating, but don't, the last thing I want anybody to do and the last, I mean, the whole reason why I'm not doing macros right now is because I become way too fixated on it. And it's not healthy for someone to be that, um, like just that hyper aware of what you're doing that way. To me, it's not healthy. And my, you know, my therapist is like, that's not a good idea for you. So like I said, you know, you just find the part of keto that works for you. I mean, there's Tammy from Keto in the Chaos. She does a higher protein, lower fat version of keto and she's lost probably 200 pounds by now. Um, the last time I saw, I think she was done like 198, down 198 pounds. So, you know, again, some people like she, she's lost weight super quick. And there's some people like me, you know, the it took me, the, four or five months to lose that first 25 pounds. But again, you can see it in my face. I could see it in my clothes. It was just, you know, that scale, just, it can be a liar. He can be a liar. He lies. You a liar. So yeah, so I know this video is all over the place. It's kind of rambly, but I just wanted to share what's going on with me. Um, I go back in June. I see my regular doctor on March 1st because I have to have a monthly up, um, visit to keep up with the fentermine. So... We'll see. Um, my goal for this week is just to not lose my mind. That's really my goal. Um, I see my therapist tomorrow because I was out of town yesterday. I normally go on Mondays. And, and I haven't seen him in two weeks. So hopefully we can have a pretty good session. And I can just kind of deal with this anger and grief. And yeah. Yeah, I don't want to cry. <laughs> I don't want to cry. I'm trying my hardest not to cry, but I'm really disappointed and I'm just mad. <laughs> I'm just angry. I'm just angry, but I'll get over it. So anyways, I don't know if you guys can see, but we did this thing. Holy Moses. <laughs> this took me eight hours, I think. Um, we used um, peel and stick wallpaper from Amazon. It's a little thicker than contact paper, but just as flipping aggravating. And then in the middle, neither one of us re realized that we'd have to match up the pattern. So that took forever, but it's done. I don't know if you can see my happiness sign. Um, it was green, but we painted it blue and I'm gonna be decorating the shelves. I got a new pillow for my new chair over here. So yeah, so, oh, and I got my new um, at sign down here. Rob's like, that's called something else. And I'm like, I look it up and the Oxford Dictionary said no. <laughs> so, and I have an ampersand up here. I don't think I've ever shown it, but I love typography. My, if you guys saw my Christmas tree, I have words all over it, but, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, anyway, so the next time you see me, that should be all decorated. Um, if I get the results before my next weigh in, I may come on and share them with you. Um, but yeah, so if you guys would just be nice in the comments to each other, to me, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. I'm just not, <clears throat> I'm not in the frame of mind right now to really deal with idiocracy and armchair physicians. So um, remember that if you give medical advice, I'm going to delete it and maybe block you. I don't know. We'll see what kind of mood I'm in. I'm just kidding. I won't block you unless you're just being an asshole. So yeah, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. 
I am wearing a new ring. I, well, it's not new. I've had this ring for like 20 years, but it's super big. So see, that's a win. And I think this is an eight. I think I mentioned that in last video that, or my January recap video that I was wearing, getting into an eight. I'm pretty sure this is an eight. I bought it when I was skinnier. <laughs> so yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much. Roxy says hi. She loves you. I love you. Keep on keeping on, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.